Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taren, and this is the Goblin Tribal Deck for Corset 2019. So you'll notice there is a green screen behind me right now. So I'm uh, currently kind of reorganizing the office and just wanted to pop this up uh, for today. It'll probably go down eventually uh, in future videos. But for now, we've got a nice little green screen background with some graphics going. But this deck is the Goblin Tribal deck, so let's jump right into it, guys. Starting with the deck tech, with our creatures, we've got Fire, Fi Fanatical Firebrand, not Firebrand, Fanatical. What, what is that? Fanatical Firebrand, Skirk Prospector, Goblin Chainweller, and Goblin Warchief. A lot of the goblins are actually very, very cheap or super fast, so this is kind of an aggro-based strategy, a mono-red-based strategy. So this is basically a mono-red burn deck or, you know, mono-red uh, deck wins style deck. Uh, Fanatical Firebrand is a one-mana, one-one haster that can actually do a point of damage to a target creature or player, which is great. Prospector can help you get out a turn three creature or a three-mana creature on turn two, which is very good. Um, and if you have multiples, you can get up, you know, with larger creatures as well. Chain Whirler is great against the token-based strategy, as well as just being a 3-3 first record. That alone makes it a huge threat. And then Garvin Warchief makes all of our spells cheaper, and then makes all of our goblins have haste. The uh, three-mana to make, or the goblin spells costing one, one less that actually isn't as impactful to our actual game plan here uh, because of how many creatures we have that just need like one red mana or three red mana um, but the haste ability here is super nice especially with goblin chain whirler in the lower end slots going up to the upper end slots for us as far as our four and five mana spots we have goblin trash master and siege gang siege gang commander uh, four mana three three other goblins you control get plus and plus one and sacrifice a goblin destroy target artifact so this card is super very super good for us and um, basically replacing a braid for us in the deck list as well as just being a great way to pump our board state with goblins um, and if you have two of them on the battlefield since they're not legendary uh, they can be both four fours and have the same ability as well as sacrificing uh, artifacts or killing artifacts siege gang commander is a five mana two two it makes three one one red goblin creature tokens it would also pay to sacrifice a goblin and deal two points of damage to any target as well so that can be a planeswalker that can be a creature that can be an opponent's face the deck is basically built to be like all in, basically, as, as fast as we possibly can get out of our goblins, we're going to try and do that and um, pump up our goblins with Trash Master and sack them with Commander, doing extra points of damage until our opponent is uh, is dead. What do we use to back up all these creatures? Well, we have things like uh, Shock, Lightning Strike, Wizard's Lightning, and the Flame of Keld. So Flame of Keld is a card I might actually put a full four of over Wizard's Lightning here uh, because I really love this card a lot. It's a two mana enchantment saga. Chapter one, two, and three. Chapter one, discard your card or your hand. Chapter two, draw two cards, which is drawing three cards basically because this, this activates on your draw step. And chapter three, for red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn. It deals that much damage plus two to that permanent or player instead. So Lightning Strike deals five points of damage. Shock deals four. Wizard's Lightning deals five points of damage. So Flame of Guild is super powerful, especially because we have a deck that's built around basically blowing out our hand really quickly and then using Flame of Kel to refill our hand with as many cards as possible to win the game. Uh, Shock and Lightning Strike, of course, are here for uh, dealing points of damage to a Planeswalker opponent's face, or just uh, getting creatures out of the way from, for, for our creatures to go, go through. And Witcher's Lightning is just, you know, basically Lightning Strike again, um, but for three mana. So this is the only card that I, I don't really like in the deck as much, but I do think that having Burn in the deck is more useful here. Um, Fight with Fire could be in this spot instead, but I do like Witcher's Lightning here uh, over that regardless. Uh, but that's all the actual, like, spells in the deck as well. Let's move on to our lands, which is a simple 23 mountains. This is kind of a budget build, honestly, but I really didn't see any kind of need for putting um, any kind of other lands in the deck. There is the Sun Scorched Desert, which does one point of damage to opponent, uh, but because we have so many like mana intensive creatures in the deck list, like needing like triple red or double red or something like that, we really did need just like straight up just doing uh, red mana uh, for our deck list. And I did like how uh, some of the cards came in tapped, like some of the red lands came in tapped. Uh, this card really just, or just having basic lands just helps us out. Uh, just kind of uh, making sure we can get a land out and use it immediately. Um, that's all the cards in the first game one game plan, the first 60. Let's go to the sideboard here. Sideboard game plan is a little bit different, a little bit more removal for us. Chandra Defeat, a Magma Spray, a Braid, Fight with Fire in here as well. Uh, Chandra Defeat is here against the, the like Mirror Match or against a Mono Red deck list, as well as just killing a like Chandra Torch of Defiance because that card is ridiculous. A one mana instant deals five damage to target red creature or red planeswalker. If that permanent is a Chandra planeswalker, you may draw a card or discard a card if you do draw a card. So super good for one mana. Magma Spray is here to deal with the Scrappy Scrounge. Here to deal with um, a lot of the like 
Dread Wanderers coming around in the uh, mono black or white black zombies deck lists. Magnus Spray is super good for that. A Braid is here as extra removal for the board state as well as dealing with vehicles. Any kind of artifacts, blue white artifacts, or um, the Is It artifacts list that's coming around, as well as just the like mono blue uh, Karn artifact deck that's kind of making the rounds right now too. And Fight with Fire is just better creature removal, replacing basically Wizards Lightning in our uh, deck list here. A three mana sorcery, we can kick it for six, making it a nine mana spell here. A uh, Fight with Fire deals five damage to target creature. If this spell was kicked, it deals ten damage divided as you choose among any number of targets instead. So that includes opponent's face too. So. Um, that is insane and super good for sideboard play. Uh, moving on to some more uh, stuff in the sideboard, we have Carrie Zev's Expertise and Glorybringer. I really love Carrie Zev's Expertise here, making sure we can grab an opponent's creature, as well as get out another goblin onto our side of the field. And Glorybringer is just a great way to get some flying damage, as well as just shutting down an opponent's board state, uh, with like killing either, you know, their Chain Whirler or another First Strike creature, especially in the white-black, um, like, Knight deck right now. Glorybringer is a huge bomb against that deck list. Of course, in those deck lists, we do have to, you know, look out for Seal Away and Settle Wreckage and things like that. But Glorybringer is still a boss, 5-mana 4-4 four, four Flyer Haste, you can exert it when it attacks, and if you do, it deals 4 damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. The only reason it's kind of in the sideboard for us right now is because this is a tribal deck list for goblins, and um, this card isn't that great if we're going up against another dragon list, so Glorybringer isn't that great in that particular situation, but everywhere else, Glorybringer is an all-star. <clears throat> So here's the full 75, folks. Uh, it's actually only 10 tickets on MTGO. If you want to buy this from MTGO Traders, you're going to you know, spend around 10 tickets, which is not bad at all. And if you would build this in paper, it's only 50 bucks. Goblin Travel right now is super affordable, and most of it isn't like you know rotating at all. I don't think any of it is rotating, actually. Um, just a lot of fun here. I can't wait for more goblins to come in. If we get more goblins in Ravnica, that would be amazing. Um, but if not, this deck is super fun and super doable. Flame of Kel does a lot of work for us. Uh, as a card to help, you know, refill our hand and being a great chapter three play where we can do like extra damage with all of our creatures and all of our burn spells. Um, but yeah, let's get into some matches, guys, and see how we do. All right, guys, let's get into some matches with the Goblin Tribal deck, starting with match one here. Kind of a complicated match ourselves, but we have an awesome opening hand uh, with three lands here. And that is uh, basically exactly what you want, because a lot of the actual goblins here in the deck are three mana or more. And we do have a bunch of that are, that are one mana, though. I'll play out the Prospector first, and uh, just kind of waiting on the opponent. I believe they're on an Artifact strategy. I think it was Mono Blue Artifacts here. Uh, but getting with the Prospector here, we could go for a Lightning Strike or a Shock on their turn here, seeing if they have any kind of large creature threats coming in on turn three. Um, Trash Master is an obvious turn four play. Inspector, we want to kill that as soon as possible uh, with the Shock there. A uh, Lightning Strike could do it, but the Inspector only has two toughness, so Shock goes to that. Um, then pass turn back to us here. We're going to go with a land, go with Firebrand, a Fanatical Firebrand, and then get in for a two here, and then hold up Lightning Strike for another either Foundry Inspector or a Chief the Foundry, something like that. Fountain of Renewal in this deck is kind of annoying because it does uh, artificially elongate the match for us. We go for a Lightning Strike to the face to kind of uh, mitigate that uh, damage there for, for our life gain from the Fountain of Renewal. They go for Syncopate to... Uh, get rid of that. We could have gone for the Prospector there, but we decided to go for just Goblin Chain Whirler here and uh, get into it for some more damage. The Trash Masters in our hand are super useful. We could have played that on that turn to kill the Fountain, but we're kind of opting to have a wider board state instead of just a large board state. They go Unsummon on our Chain Whirler, which is super interesting because Chain Whirler, when it enters the battlefield, does one point of damage. I assume they did that because they have an Essence Scatter right here um, in their hand. Um, and uh, let's see, yeah, they have a, yep, there it is, Essence Scatter. So we do get to play the uh, Chain Whirler on the following turns, uh, kind of uh, unabated here. And uh, getting kind of running away with this match now, they play Chief the Foundry. Uh, we have Wizard's Lightning or Chain Whirler. We're just going to go Trash Master here and pump our board state, sack the Prospector to kill the Chief of the Foundry, and uh, get in for two points of damage with the Fanatic or Firebrand. The best part about Trash Master is you can just sack your Prospector, which you were probably already going to sack anyway, to kill artifacts. And against an artifact deck like this, it's just a win-win situation. Um, so they play a Renegade map here, having some mana untapped, we're going to go for a land drop and then uh, go for another Trash Master, just pumping our board state. I'm ha attacking in for 7 here, dropping our opponent down to 6 if we hit, get in on the hit. We do, and we're passing the turn right back to our opponent. Fountain of Renewal, gaining them alive, going back up to 7 here. And they can sack that and draw a card for 3 mana, so if uh, they want to do that, they can. Renegade map as well from them on the sack. 4 cards in their hand. They don't see anything in their hand, they go with a GG, and that is it for game one. 
So uh, game two here, we see that they are on a artifact strategy. We take out Flame of Kel, we bring in a Braids, and uh, that's basically it. We could bring in Glorybringers if you want to be more aggressive, but I think our like game plan with the Goblins is perfectly fine. Um, so we're just going to kind of keep that and get into uh, game two here and see what we can do against this seemingly mono blue artifact deck. So another great opening hand with three lands in it, Prospector and Chain Whirler with Wizards Lightning and Lightning Strike. So love everything about this hand. We're going to go with a keep here. Waiting on an opponent to keep and they go with a land drop and a Fountain of Renewal on turn one. Again, really obnoxious for our deck, but we'll try and get around it as much as we can. Two land drop here for opponents in just the uh, pass turn. Maybe holding up a uh, Essence Scatter this turn, um, but not really sure yet. Getting in for one point of damage and just dropping it down. Keep in mind, the Fountain of Renewal gains them a life, so that one point of damage we're doing is basically just kind of keeping them at even <laughs> with uh, their life total here. Uh, they lay another land and pass. We're going to go with a Lightning Strike on the instep to kind of see if we can get a uh, negate or a uh, counter spell out of their hand. We're going to go for an attack first, then hold up Wizard's Lightning, kind of making sure that if they do have a counter, they're not going to be able to counter the uh, Chain Whirler when they want to. So we're just going to continue to uh, kind of crash in damage. They lay a fourth land drop, and then I think they go to pass their turn here. They do. And we're going to Wizard's Lightning to the face once again, doing some more damage to their face. So making sure that uh, whatever we do, we have plenty of room to continue to uh, do damage to them. And if they're holding up for a control spell for Chain Whirler, they're still going to take lots of damage to Wizard's Lightnings, Lightning Strikes, things like that. Uh, top decking to another Wizard's Lightning here is fantastic. So again, they're going up to 15 with the Fountain. They hit another Fountain here, uh, which is uh, really obnoxious. <laughs> again, uh, making that um, the one point of damage we're doing with the Prospector actually a loss now. We're still going to go Wizard's Lightning here and pass turn. We have enough mana here that if we do Chain Whirler and they do like Syncopate, we can actually uh, make sure it survives, um, which we do hit the board, which is great. And then they go with an Unsummon here right before combat happens. We get into uh, one point of damage again. So actually, we do get to do two points of damage this turn. Um, being able to kind of put them back, back down to uh, 10, back up to 12, thanks to their fountains. Uh, five land drop. I think it's three cards in hand here. Really need to get into uh, like a Trash Master or an Abrade. That would be great. Hitting into a Shock is okay, though. They go for a Syncopate for four. We actually have enough mana to do this with the Prospector. So we actually do this to make sure the Chain Weather resolves so we can actually continue to do damage um, to their board state. Uh, because doing three damage is a little bit more, just basically doing, technically, doing just one point of damage every single turn uh, with the Fountains on their side of the field. Um, would love to get out of Shock, though. Lay out... Uh... Okay. And then getting out of Chief, the Foundry here. We're going to play a land and attack in here. It is a 2-3, so they're probably not going to block. And uh, we just get in for free for three points of damage. Now they go back up two thanks to the fountain. So again, it's just kind of artificially elongating the game because we're such an aggressive deck. Um, uh, Foundry Inspector here is super frustrating. We could have gone with Shock there, but it would not have killed the Foundry Inspector. So they get in for three here, I believe. We keep getting into lands right now. And uh, we're going to attack in, see if they want to chump block or anything like that. Thanks to Shock, it basically gives us the ability to hit for five points of damage, which is very powerful. And uh, they actually let it happen, so they go down to nine here. And then going back up to 11, thanks to the Fountain. So we're slowly but surely getting them down in life. Uh, but it's happening, you know, one point at a time. They completely swing in here. We're down to six. We really need a go-wide strategy now. Getting into a commander here would be amazing. Um, they sack that. And we get into another Goblin Chain Whirler, which isn't bad, honestly. It does give us the ability to uh, kind of go wide here, do some damage. And we use Shock here to uh, also kill a... Oh, they go with Unsummon before combat, which is kind of amazing. We go with that Chain Whirler here and get two more points of damage to everything. And then do Shock to the Chief of the Foundry, which is like the best move ever. <laughs> they didn't have, they didn't have uh, another life gain there with the Fountains. Unsummon on Goblin Chain Whirler. They attack in with a 4-3. We decide to block that. Does die. First strike is a thing, <laughs> guys. Uh, then we go Goblin Chain Whirler once again. And uh, just, again, Goblin Chain Whirler is just straight up value forever. Um, such a good goblin in this deck. And um, I think it's the most expensive goblin in the deck list. It's just a house. It's one of the best cards in standard at the moment. Uh, these are both three fours, so we can't really get past them just yet unless we have some uh, good removal. 
Um, opponent deciding whether or not to attack in here. They do attack in and we do allow it because they are a blue deck. They're not going to have like direct damage stuff. We top deck a commander and that's basically all she wrote here. Commander uh, going super wide. We can either do damage to them or do damage to the chief of the foundries, uh, which we decide to do that instead. So our uh, train whirlers can get in for some damage this turn. An opponent is uh, conceding it. That's it. <laughs> so good match overall for us. Let's get into match two here and see what we can do. Really like that match. But let's see what we can do in match two. Another three land hand. Love this hand. Fanatical Firebrand, Shock, Lightning Strike, and Goblin Warchief. Just a lot of great stuff. And Goblin Chain Roller off the top. Firebrand getting in for one point of damage. They're on Is It right here. And uh, I believe this is another artifact deck, if I'm not mistaken. Getting in for uh, one more point of damage. Holding up a Shock or Lightning Strike for any kind of uh, follow up creature. Now, if we see blue, we always kind of want to be careful. There's a Harness Lightning to the Firebrand we have. If we see blue, we're always kind of careful to uh, work around either an Essence Scatter or a Disallow or something like that. In the early game, it's not that impactful, uh, but in the mid to late game, it can be devastating because we're uh, top decking most of the time. Going out for a land, going for the uh, War Chief because it is a hasty creature and uh, getting in for two. We did that first because we want to make sure that uh, Chain Whirler does not get countered. They go for an Aether Sweeper, which is incredibly interesting. We go for a Chain Whirler here. It is a 1-2, so it doesn't actually... Um, do much to kill that, but it, we do get the uh, free attack in here with this, thanks to uh, the Warchief giving the Chain Whirler haste. Holding up Shock here, we could kill the Aether Sweeper there, but we uh, hold on to it for now, because it can kill it whenever. Tezzeret off the top there, getting a plus one, making a Thopter. Um, really, again, nothing too exciting. We go for Shock on the uh, Aether Sweeper and pass turn to us. And then just play out the Commander, because we have a full board state of hazy creatures. And instead of attacking Tezzeret here, we just straight up go for the face because it drops them down uh, to uh, three, which is Lightning Strike range. And that's kind of all she wrote on the first game here. So super fast, super effective, love goblins. And uh, yeah, this deck super makes me super happy. <laughs> yep, that's it for game one. Let's get into a game two here. We're going to take out the Trash Master, bring in a Braids and uh, bring in the Glory Bringers, take out one commander. Uh, Trash Master is super good, but wanted to uh, kind of test out the Abraid and Glory Bringer like situation first. Um, really like either one of these situations. I brought in Glory Bringer thinking this deck was more about flyers than it was about artifacts. Even though we did see Tazaret, I think this deck is more about flyers instead. Um, so we go for a land, go for Prospector, pass turn, and then holding up a Lightning Strike the following turn, or, you know, getting into something else. But nope, just a Lightning Strike. Attack in here with our one here. We could play the Goblin Chain Warlord that turn, or the War Chief, but we're kind of uh, holding on to that for a little bit. Should have used Lightning Strike on the instep there. Um, so now we're having to use it on their actual, on our actual turn. A little annoying, but uh, we did hit F6 there, which did, you know, make us auto pass. Magma Spray to our Prospector. I'm going to go for a War Chief here, and they go for Essence Scatter, which is good for us because we actually have, you know, two Chain Whirlers. So playing those back to back is really good for our uh, board state. Chain Whirler play, killing that Thopter and doing a point of damage to their face, and then a uh, passing turn back to them. They have an Abraid for the Chain Whirler, though, which is kind of obnoxious. We go Chain Whirler again. We probably should have held up for a Lightning Strike instead of Chain Whirler because Chain Whirlers aren't as useful uh, unless they uh, do some board wipe action. We go Glorybringer here since we hit the, our fifth land and then just uh, hit uh, Shalai, not Shalai, uh, Sahili Rai, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Sahili Rai, and then hit uh, Goblin Chain Whirler uh, directly to their face. Down to 14, they go for uh, Kumina's Awakening, an interesting card, but Really, at this point in the match, it's kind of over. We're doing much a bunch of damage. They really need to get a way uh, uh, to uh, destroy our creatures, but we just continue to go wide. If they have a Sweltering Suns, that would be great, but it doesn't look they like they have it. They hit a land drop. They go for a Madness Spray on the Commander, which is very good, but at the end of the match, they can't really do anything. Let's get into match three here and see what we can do. So we have kind of a mana heavy hand, four lands instead of three. Uh, but we do keep it because of the double lightning strike here. Just good removal overall and good damage uh, to an opponent's face. So they play Evolving Wilds, which we think that they have kind of a slow hand. Um, we top deck a land, which is not exactly what we want, uh, but we can still get into some good creatures on turn three. They have a white black here and they go for the uh, the new Diamond Mare, which is awesome. But we kill that with a lightning strike. Then we also just play a land pass, holding up maybe a lightning strike. Could have gone with a Chain Whirler, but again, we want to make sure that the Chain Whirler is super worth it. Uh, by killing lots of creatures. So this is basically a life gain token based strategy. Um, they have the metallic mimic and the 1-1 uh, lifelinker there. We shouldn't have used the lightning strike there. We should have waited for the goblin chain whirler to come down uh, because they're tapped out. Because now, you know, that kills both creatures either way. Um, go for the prospector and just pass turn here. And then the next turn, play out the uh, goblin commander. 
which is uh, just value town forever. Um, go for Metallic Mimic on their side of the field. And another Diamond Mare. So tapping out, which is very good for us. Getting into Goblin Chain Whirler here is basically what we want to do to kill the Metallic Mimic because it's just a huge threat to their board state, or to our board state, uh, because it can make their deck, you know, kind of go crazy. So we just attack in with the Chain Whirler and pass turn. They go for an Evolving Wilds here, and then they pass turn holding up what I would assume is a Settle the Wreckage. We go for a uh, attack here with the two Chain Whirlers, thinking that um, they will settle the wreckage if we see if they see both of the chain rollers coming in. Um, and we do have a commander here to make sure that if that does happen, we still go wide and we can still kind of overpower them that way. Which that does happen, they do settle, they gain a life from that, thanks to it being a white thing, a white uh, spell. And uh, we get two lands off of that, which is not bad, and then go for a uh, commander here, making four creatures. Uh, one, two, two, and then three, one, ones. So, super good there. Laying a tap land for them, and I think they're passing the turn once again. Since they're kind of out of cards, they have one card in hand. Um, we lay a land here. And we just attack out uh, with a shock first, and then we actually kill the uh, the mayor, and then attack out. There we go. Pulling back the commander because of a seal away, or a uh, settle the wreckage. We're down to 13 here. We're super close to being able to uh, hurt them. So we have Shock and the Commanders, and we're kind of doing math in our head right now, going, okay, so we can do damage directly, like this, and then Sack, we drop them down to 8, and then this is actually game this turn. So we can just start sacking Goblins over and over again, and Shock is another 2 points of damage to the face. Prospector's uh, Sack there, and then just Shock to the face. And that's it, man! That's nice. Uh, let's get into uh, Game 2 here with the sideboard. Um, so we take out the Trash Master, bring in Glorybringer, take out Flame of Keld, and bring in a Braids. I like a Braids because it does more direct damage uh, to their board state, so the Diamond Mares are a little annoying because they are 1-3s, but they are also artifacts, so we can deal with them that way. Uh, bringing in Prospector here on turn 1. Another decent opening hand for us, thanks to that a Braid. We didn't really see many creatures that weren't artifacts, so having a Braid in your opening hand is pretty decent. Getting in for 1 point of damage on turn 2. But they have Seal Away for the Prospector, which is incredibly odd. I feel like they should have waited for a uh, Chain Whirler or a Warchief for that, but okay. <laughs> We go with a pass there, and uh, pass turn back to them here. They go with a Diamond Mare, and we just have a braid in hand, and we just snap kill that immediately. Really want to get the uh, Diamond Mares out of the way. Going for a Goblin Ward Chief, and then attacking in, making sure that a uh, turn 4 Goblin Commander, or gang, a Siege Gang Commander, could be a possibility. They don't hit their third land drop, and that is actually it. Well, that's all the matches, guys. I hope you did like that. Um, yeah, so like if you like it, sub if you loved it, and I will see you guys in the next video for some more deck techs, some more, you know, MTG Finance and drafts from Kenji, all that kind of fun stuff, and look forward to more content in the future. Also, if you guys aren't aware, I am streaming now uh, back on the Twitch. I'll leave a, a link in the, uh, in the the comments below pinned. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you guys there for, uh, you know, just some fun drafts, some fun standard stuff. Fan Fridays, of course, on Fridays. And, uh, you know, playing some, like, random video games, too. That'd be fun, too. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.